Hello. We're going to be discussing some math. In particular, we're going to be solving rational equations. There's a trick to making this easy. That trick is called using an LCM, a least common multiple. It sounds mean and scary, but it's not. So I listed the steps to solving a rational equation. That is a fraction equation, an equation with fractions in it. Step one, find an expression that includes all the denominators multiplied together. OK. We need an expression with 7 times 3 times a in it. 21a. Guess what? That's our least common multiple. Multiply all the terms, 1 7th, negative 2 thirds, and 1 over a. Multiply all the terms in the equation by 21a. When you're multiplying a fraction by 21a, you put it up in the numerator. So I'll have 1 times 21a over 7, minus 2 times 21a over 3, equals 1 times 21a over a. Now there's a reason I'm doing that. And that's so that I can cancel out the denominators. Here the sevens cancel out each other. Here the threes cancel out each other. And here the a's cancel out each other. Leaving me with 1 times 3 times a, 3a, minus 2 times 7 times a, that's minus 14a, equals 1 times 7 times 3, which is 21. Then you just solve the equation. And here's your answer, your solution. It's that easy. We took every term and we multiplied it by an expression that contains 7 times 3 times a, which is 21a, although there's, you can really just leave it 7 times 3 times a, makes it easier. Okay, here's another rational equation. Remember, rational comes from the Latin word ratio, which means fraction. Our denominators are 5 and 6. That is 5 times 6, which is 30. So I will multiply every term by 30. For the fractions, I'll put the 30 up in the numerator. But 12 is not a fraction here, so I'll just multiply it by 30. So I'll have x times 30 over 5 minus x times 30 over 6 equals 12 times 30. Well, 5 goes into 30 six times, so we have x times 6, which is 6x. 6 goes into 30 five times, so we have minus 5 times x. And 12 times 30 is 360. If I have six X's and I take away five X's, I'm left with one X. X equals 360. And it's that easy. Now this is special. Here we have one fraction equals one fraction. Way back in pre-algebra, 
you discuss these and you also discuss them in beginning algebra or algebra one. When you have one fraction equals one fraction, what have you got? You've got a proportion. And when you've got a proportion, you can cross multiply. Y minus seven times five equals four times Y plus three. And boom, here's what you've got. Five times Y minus seven equals four times Y plus three. You can only do that when you have an equation that has one fraction on the left, one fraction on the right, and nothing else. We distribute, we distribute, we solve our equation, get the variable terms all on one side of the equation and the number terms all on the other side of the equation, and we get y equals 47. We didn't even have to come up with an LCM when you've got a proportion. Ah, uh, now here's something that looks a little more difficult. 100 over X minus 100 over X minus 5 equals 2 over X. But if we use our strategy of always multiplying by an LCM, it gets easier. And what is the LCM? It contains the denominators. You've got two denominators here that are identical. So really, you've only got two denominators, x and x minus 5. That is, you have two different denominators. So I multiply them together. And I'm not even going to distribute because why make life hard? I'm going to let my LCM be X times X minus five. And then I'll multiply 100 over X by X times X minus five, minus 100 times X times X minus five over X minus five equals two times X times X minus five over X. And then I cancel my denominators. Here the x's cancel, and I'm left with 100 times x minus 5. Here the x minus 5's cancel, and I'm left with minus 100x. And over here the x's cancel, and I'm left with 2 times x minus 5. When I distribute 100 times x, 100 times minus 5, I'll have 100x minus 500 minus 100x equals 2x minus 10. Over here, 100x minus 100x equals 0. So that leaves me with minus 500 equals 2x minus 10. And then to get my constant terms together, I will add 10 to both sides of the equation. Negative 500 plus 10 is negative 5, 490. Meanwhile, negative 10x, negative 10 plus 10 is zero, so I'm left with 2x over here. Negative 490 equals 2x. I divide by two and my answer is 245. That's what X equals. LCMs are better than chocolate chip cookies. Oh, well, they had to get more difficult, didn't they? Here we have denominators. But I am not able to know what my LCM is 
until I factor all my denominators. So x squared minus 7x plus 6 is x minus 6 times x minus 1. x minus 6 is already in factored form, and 4x minus 4 is 4 parentheses x minus 1. These are the factors I have in my denominators. I've got an x minus 6, I've got an x minus 1, and I've got a 4. I put these together right here. And that's my LCM, my least common multiple. I then proceed to, um, here, let me do this. Multiply by my LCM by six, multiply by my LCM by one, and multiply by my LCM by one. But I'm careful to leave everything in factored form. Okay, so here I multiply six by four, times x minus 6 times x minus 1. I leave x squared minus 7x plus 6 in factored form so that the x minus 6's cancel and the x minus 1's cancel. That leaves me with 6 times 4, which is 24. Over here, the x minus 6's cancel. So I'm left with a minus. 1 times 4 is 4, times x minus 1. And over here, my 4's cancel, my x minus 1's cancel, so I'm left with 1 times x minus 6, which is x minus 6. So I'll have 24 minus 4x minus, uh, uh, plus 4. I have negative 4 times negative 1, that's plus 4, equals x minus 6. 24 plus 4 is 28, minus 4x equals x minus 6. <coughs> I decide to move my 4x over here with the other x term. So I'll have negative 4x here, but I add 4x here. That gives me 0 or 0x zero over here. I add my 4x over here. 4x plus x is 5x. Then I move my minus 6 over to the other side, so it'll be with the other number. And so I'll have negative 6 plus 6 equals 28 plus 6, I've got 34 equals 5x, I divide by 5, and my answer is x equals 34 over 5. Piece of cake when you have an LCM. Okay, you factor first so you'll know how to construct your LCM. I have a Z minus 3 and a Z plus 3. And I have a 4. That's, that goes into 36. So 4 times Z squared minus 9. That will be 4 times Z plus 3 times Z minus 3. So the factors that make up my denominators are 4 and z plus 3, and z minus 3. And to form my LCM, all I do is multiply these three factors. Now make sure you've written another line with your denominators in completely factored form, because your LCM in factored form 
is going to cancel out the denominators. That's its job. That's what it does. Here the fours cancel, z plus three cancels, and z minus three, three cancels, leaving you with one. Over here, only the z minus threes cancel, so you're left with three times four, which is 12, times z plus three. And over here, the z plus threes cancel, so you're left with six times four, which is 24, times z minus three. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm going to distribute the 12 into there. Distribute, distribute, and I'm going to distribute my 24. Distribute, distribute. That will give me 1 plus 12z plus 36, which will give me 1 plus 36 is 37. I'll have 12z plus 37. Over here, I'll have 24z minus 72. And then I decide, well, golly gosh, I think I'll move my 12z over here with the 24z. So I'll subtract 12z from both sides of the equation. 12z minus 12z is zero. I'm left with a 37 over here. 24z minus 12z is 12z, and I still have my minus 72. Then I decide to add 72 to both sides of the equation, leaving me with 12z equals 109. Then I divide by 12 and divide by 12. So I have z equals 109 over 12. Now that was part D of our from our homework. Here's part E. Since there were only two word problems, it didn't make sense to me to create a whole new set of notes and a whole new section, so I combined them. The ratio of the weight on an object on Mars to the weight of an object on Earth is 0 0.4 to 1. Now what that means is 0 0.4 to 1. When you're talking about ratios, and proportions. The fraction bar becomes the two bar. 0 0.4, two, one. The word T-O, two. Now how much will a 117 pound astronaut weigh on Mars? Well, I've put Mars on top and Earth on the bottom. So I have to put the 117 on the bottom and X on the top. And now I have a proportion. All I have to do is cross multiply. 0 0.4 times 117 equals x times 1, which is x. So x equals 46.8. That astronaut will only weigh 46.8 pounds on Mars. I'm moving to Mars. And finally, this is one of my favorite problems. To determine the number, and this is a real method, to determine the number of trout in a lake, a conservationist catches 143 trout. 
from an unknown number of fish in the lake, of trout in the lake. He catches 143, tags them, and throws them back in the lake. So we have tagged fish over total fish, which is 143 over, I don't have the slightest idea what the total number of trout is. Later he comes back or she comes back, catches 40 trout all together. 10 of those trout are tagged. Now I have a proportion. 143 over X equals 10 over 40. I multiply 40 times 143 equals 10 X and then divide by 10. So that in my calculator, what I did is I said four times 143 divided by 10 and I got the answer 572. That means originally, when the uh, conservationist caught and tagged 143 trout, there were 572 trout in the lake. And that's how the conservationist figures out how many trout or estimates how many trout are in the lake. It works. It's a method used today. How many bees are in the hive? How many deer are in the forest? How many trout are in the lake? Let's see if we have any more problems. We don't. And this is it for solving rational equations. I went through this pretty fast because I had to actually write the notes for the people who are working ahead before I made the video because it takes more time to, to talk and write at the same time. So here I've discussed how I work the problems. And now please remember, you can always go backward and play the video again. Enjoy solving rational equations. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.